Hi everyone and welcome to the Wednesday class, uh, the Wednesday um, support your health the Shiatsu way. Um, and I've got my colleague Basti and Dinah in the background there. Um, do you want to say hi Basti? Hi everyone, I don't I'm have Basti. a video feed today. Yeah, he's not on video but he's there. He's going to be there in the chat so if anything happens you're not sure about during the session, um, Basti and I can see Dinah's there as well, they can answer any questions you have. Um, about the class. If anything happens to you, if you have a reaction to any exercises and you need a bit of support, they're right there uh, with you. Okay, so this is the first of a new look Wednesday class. We've been doing these classes for 35 weeks now. We started them at the beginning of lockdown um, to help out our clients and it's spread worldwide now. We're getting a lot of shiatsu practitioners worldwide coming on the class and they're using these uh, exercise classes to inspire them to do the same for their clients. So it's kind of spreading out. So really, really well, real, we'd like to really welcome you to the class. And let's just find out if we've got any new people on the um, on this class. So if you're a regular, just check I'm a regular. I've been before maybe a few times. And if it's your first time, then just click that it's my first time and we'll give you a big welcome and then we'll get straight on with the class. Okay, wow, look at this. 40, nearly half of you haven't been before. So that's absolutely awesome. Um, and we're gonna try and make a really exciting experience for you and a really beneficial one, hopefully, uh, for your health. If you can't make the class, we will automatically send um, uh, a link to the recording. So if you can't make it one week, don't worry about it. One of the most exciting things about this class for us is that we respond to you each week. And as the different stresses of coronavirus have gone up and down, We've changed the exercises, modified them, and tweaked them every week. And this is how it works. We find out how you are doing. We tune in to our energy. We find out which zone we're in in our nervous system. And then we're going to do a theme of the week. And this is new. Our idea is to take you right through a whole yearly cycle. And we're going to basically cover the basics of shiatsu theory and practice, working on ourselves. Every week, we're going to cover a very important acupoint that you can use yourself. We're going to explain how it works, how to access it. And then we do about 35, 40 minutes of energy work exercises, a mixture of self shiatsu, doing, qigong, lots of fun. Um, and we try and apply those th that theory and those points to what you need um, as a group. OK, so that's how it kind of works. And this is the program we've got lined up for you over the next 10 weeks. We're going to, this week, we're going to look at yin and yang. It's the most basic thing. And then we're going to go through the elements uh, theory. We're going to do a little feature in the middle about eating well for the season. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Then we're going to look at the vital substances of Chinese medicine related to this element. Um, and then we look at the organ functions and do a channel overview and then a review. And we're going to put in some major points there, point of the week each week. So by the end of the 10 weeks, you should have a really good idea of how to use shiatsu and Chinese medicine to support your own health and also uh, some useful points that you can use for self shiatsu. So that's the plan, everyone. OK, so let's get straight away into it and let's find out generally what your stress levels are like as a group. So I'm going to um, find out just how you're coping. I know we're into the second wave a lot of places in Europe. I know if you're in, if you're in America, I know you're having a pretty tough time there. So just take a moment to think, how well are you coping? Are you kind of coping well, you're okay, neutral, or are you feeling stressed or very stressed? And we'll get an idea of your overall um, feeling in the group. And hopefully we can work on that through this session. OK, so we've got about half, just over half of you that are doing well or coping well. Um, so we've got a lot of scope there. So let's get on with the exercise uh, class and hopefully we'll, we'll, we can improve on that. So we found out how you're coping generally. Now we're going to just check in to see which zone you're in. This is the uh, polyvagal theory. The idea being that if you're socially engaged, if you're feeling in the present, feeling grounded, being able to feel compassionate, you're in that green zone. And for many reasons, it's a really good idea to be in that green zone most of the time. Now, what's happened with coronavirus is a lot of us have been pushed into that red zone, into flight and fight. Um, and that can lead over time. And we've noticed this over the last 35 weeks, that that can lead to worry or concern or frustration. Um, 
if you can't deactivate yourself down into the green zone. And then we've had a minority, but we've, these are the people we've really been looking after, uh, the people who edged out of the red zone and into the blue zone and gone into them into that free state where you feel helpless, you can't move, and you get uh, depressed and kind of numb and dissociated. So just take a moment and see how you feel, which zone you are in. And I'll run another poll. Um, okay. And we're going to ask you whether you're in the blue, uh, green, red, or blue, or a mixture of the two. So just read the options before you vote. Okay. So I do you think you're in the green zone, more or less in the red zone, the blue zone, or going between green and red, and between red and blue. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Okay, well, the good news is no one has, feels that they're totally in the blue zone, probably wouldn't even get to this class if they were. So welcome here. But what we're really concerned about is we've got over half of you are going into the red zone and into the blue zone, uh, well over half, something up to 70% um, of you are going into that red zone. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that we can deactivate you from that. Okay, so we're going to do that. We'll focus on basically... Um, and on doing that, on helping you deactivate back down into the green zone. And to do that, um, we need to just check in with the three heaters. And we use the three heaters, and we'll explain what that is in a moment, uh, for those of you at new, on how to track how the group is adjusting energetically to the different stages of the stresses that we're under at the moment. And the way we do that is we tune in to the three heaters. It's good if you have a piece of paper, if you don't need it, maybe next time bring a piece of paper and a pen. Um, but you can also do it just with your memory as well. And we're going to tune into the three zones, the three um, uh, zones, uh, the lower, middle and upper zones. We're going to figure out how you as a group, are, how the stress is and how the nervous system is starting to affect your energy. OK, so follow along with me. I do this every single week. I've done it for the last 35 weeks and it's been amazing to see how it's changed. And I hope you really enjoy doing that as well. So we're going to tune into, first of all, the lower heater. And what I'll do is I'll just take the slides out the way here and go large screen so you can see. So the lower heater is from the navel down to the pubic bone and the pelvic floor. And it's around this whole area here and into the sacrum. OK, so we'd like to just, you can sit or stand and we're just going to like relax. And we're going to take our mind's eye, our attention down into this lower area here. OK, so just take a moment to do that. And sense how you feel. What is it like in this whole area here? OK, what is it like? So just take a moment to tune in. OK, so what is it like? And if you've got some paper, you can just draw in. And if you have been here, uh, some of you have been here for many weeks, you'll be able to uh, remember what it's, how it's changed. And those of you who are new, welcome. This is your first lower heater tune in of these uh, Wednesday classes. Um, and you can see how we progress over the next few weeks. OK, cool. Next up is the middle heater. So the middle heater is this area here. It's from the line of the navel up into the rib cage and the diaphragm and it includes this lower thoracic area here okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to tune into that area again just take a bit of time turn your mind's eye inwards and just ask yourself what is it like what is this whole space here like Okay, got it? Now, if you compare that with the lower heat, I'm sure it feels different. And we're going to draw or remember what's happening in this middle heater now. I'm just going to draw it. Okay, and if you were here last week or the week before and you want to just remember what it was like, it's a good idea to check in in it. Okay, just a quick scribble, a few words, and then we can go into the upper heater. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Upper heater is the lung area, and it also includes the heart, the pericardium, the heart organ here. Okay, so we're going to tune into this whole space. It includes the thoracic spine, 
and we're going to relax. Okay, and ask yourself, what does this area feel like? What's it like? Have you got it? Okay, good. So then we're going to draw and write in here. As you're doing that, I'm just going to put up a slide that gives us a guide to what, <laughs> what it should be like if in an ideal space. I'm just finished writing my own one here. Okay. Okay. So according to Chinese medicine, what we sh the ideal um, thing to feel would be a relaxed and strong lower heater. You don't really want it to be kind of weak um, or tense. The main thing about the middle burner is it has to be flexible and flowing. The most uh, common thing is it kind of jams up. And the upper heater needs to be open and relaxed. You don't want any heat there um, and you don't, you don't want it to be constricted either, okay? So bearing that in mind, I'd like you to remember your three heaters that you were just tuned into um, and think about what we'd like them to be ideally. And I'd like you to choose, if we could just work on one heater, those three, which would it be, okay? And I'm going to, <clears throat> which burner do you want to work on most today? I'm going to, just gonna share that and then we can get straight onto the exercises. Okay, let's see. Now this has been fascinating for us over the last 35 weeks because we've seen this change um, as the different stages of coronavirus and lockdowns have occurred. And, we, and as, also as the seasons have changed as well, okay? And uh, look, we've got another really big change here because last few weeks, the lower and the upper heater have been predominant. And now look what we've got. We've got over, we've got more or less 50% of you would want to work on the middle burner. And there's reasons for that. And we'll focus on those in the class, but we won't miss out the lower and the upper burner. Okay, cool. Right, so we're going to do the exercise in a moment, but before we do them, I'm going to spend one minute just going through some of the theory and then I'll review it at the end. Okay, so this is the week one theory, just two minutes, bear with me. Okay, we're going to be experiencing yin and yang in our bodies. The original meaning of yin and yang is the sunny side of the hill and the shady side of the hill, so it's like warm and cool. Okay, um, yin and yang, by the way, are complementary, they're not opposites. They can always be further subdivided, so they're not absolute. You know, it's not absolute yin, absolute yang. For example, day is yang compared to night, but you can have hot days and cold days. The reason that we like to use yin and yang is because it's such a cool thing, because what it does is it connects the environment with our bodies. And that's something we really need to do as a species, as the humans really need to connect with the environment, as we all know. As we do the exercises, you'll find that we refer to heaven and earth, warming and cooling, activity and rest. We sometimes tune into our fluid, into our chi or ki, and we also reference the lower and the upper body, which we're gonna do straight away today when we start working on our point of the week. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and point of the week will be familiar to many of you who've been before because it's one of our favorite points. We had to start here. It's the kidney meridian, the water element, and this is the gushing spring point. It's the most yin point of the body, so you can imagine it cools the body and calms us down. It descends excess from the head, which a lot of us have, are experiencing, and it calms the spirit as well. So it's an essential point in coronavirus because we really, really need that. Okay, so let's get straight on to the exercises. I'm gonna bring in those key concepts and I'm gonna uh, bring in the point of the week as well, pretty early on. But surprise, surprise, we've switched from the upper and lower burner being predominant to the middle burner. So we're gonna to have to make sure we check that out. Um, we make sure we really address that. Okay. So let's just first of all start off by just standing. This is a basic Qigong standing position. We're gonna put our feet parallel. And what I'd like you to do is just tune into your energy and let's see whether you feel more connected down into the earth or more connected upwards. In other words, do you feel super heavy and kind of like this? Or, or do you feel kind of ungrounded and ooh, like that? Okay, now just check in and see how you feel now and we'll check in at the end and we'll see how much we can change that. 
Now, there's three reasons that that can happen. One of the big reasons that you're experiencing as a group at the moment is this middle burner is obstructing that connection between above and below. So before we do anything this week, we're going to do some shaking. And the reason we're going to do that is because this burner is predominantly associated with stagnation. and We need to get ourselves moving. OK, so just standing, checking in heaven and earth. Scan through your body and find one area that you want to release. And we're going to start shaking that. I'm going to use my hips, but you can use anywhere in your body that you want to start the shaking. And we're just going to shake that area. And if you like, you can make some sounds if you're not going to annoy the neighbours too much. Okay, Make some sounds like... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're going to just extend that shaking. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> I'm going to spread it out through the whole body, relax your jaw. Okay, try and get that shaking all the way down to your feet. Okay, now just keep shaking a little bit more. And I'll just show you the effect that that will have, particularly on those middle burner people in the group, in terms of connecting between yin and yang. Just a little bit more shaking. Can make sure you release this area too. Can you try and get that diaphragm relaxed? A little bit more. Very good. Okay, excellent. Right, so now let's just stand again and connect with heaven and earth. Okay, now can you feel just a little bit more smooth connection between heaven and earth now? And if you can, that's because we've started to release this obstruction here, and more on that later. Okay, now before we go any further up, releasing here or opening up here, we have to get the lower burner as connected as we can, um, especially to the earth. OK, and we're going to do that by some visualizations and we're going to use the point of the week, everyone. Kidney one, we're going to use that point. <laughs> um, but let's first of all start off by energizing the Dantian. The Dantian is this area just below the navel. It's closely connected to the kidney energy, which we'll find out later in this series about the theory behind that. But basically, this whole area here has to be charged up and it has to be uh, connected to the earth for us to be able to release further up the body. And I'll explain as we go along why that's so important. OK, so let's just rub our hands together, get some chi or energy into our hands. Very good. OK, now those of you who wanted to work on the lower burner, particularly those of you who felt the lower burner was maybe a little bit weak, um, or maybe a bit hot even, okay, this is going to be really important for you and it's important for all of us. So let's place one hand over the dantian, I'll just show you where that is, I'll put close up, find your navel, go down about an inch and a half to here, place your centre of palm over that area, okay, and we're just going to do some simple rotations on that point and I'll talk you through the internal aspects of it as we do it. OK, what we need to do is we need to get our breathing down into this area here. Now, if you're a middle burner person this week, you're going to have to really relax that diaphragm. Keep that diaphragm, keep this area as relaxed as you can. Breathe in and imagine the breath going down through here, down into just underneath your hands. OK, now from the side, you can see that as I do that, this area slightly swells out as the breath goes down. Okay, and then we hold the chi from the breath. Imagine the chi coming in. Hold it. And then we breathe out and relax. And we imagine the chi staying in this lower burner here underneath our hands. Okay, now if we continue to do that, what will happen is we'll bring our center of gravity down towards the Dantian. And that's going to really calm us down. For those of you who are feeling stressed, um, it's going to calm the nervous system down. Just the action of the slow exhalation, bringing our attention down into the Dantian. So let's do it. Okay, breathing in. Keep your shoulders relaxed and the diaphragm relaxed as you breathe in. That's good. Okay. Now breathe out slowly. Relax your body. Sink the chi from the breath into the lower burner. 
Now, initially, you want to get it underneath his hands and then slowly spread it out so it kind of fills up the whole of this area. Okay, let's keep going. Nice in breath. Yeah, just keep that diaphragm nice and relaxed. That's good. Okay, hold the chi in the lower burner and breathe out. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Okay, excellent. Let's just do a few more. Breathing in. Imagine light or energy going down, collecting underneath your hands. Very good. And then we're breathing out slowly, relaxing. Okay, very good. As we're doing that, we can imagine chi or energy from our hands going right through into our lower back here. If, you're, if you've got any lower back weakness, this is really good to relax the lower back, send the energy right the way through there into the back. Keep those shoulders relaxed. Very good. Okay, so now you can probably feel that you're feeling more relaxed in the upper body. It's getting more solid here. The next thing we need, we need to do, which brings in our point of the week, is we need to get this chi here connected down the legs and deep into the earth, because that's what's going to give us a really solid foundation of yin, which allows us to free up this middle burner and the upper burner. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so stage two. We bring the breath in, bring the key into the Dantian. This time, as we exhale, we send the chi down the legs using our imagination, right down to the center of our, our feet and then down, down towards the center of the earth. Okay, so do you wanna try that? Do it with me, breathing in, into the Dantian. And then nice and relaxed, breathing out, gently send that energy down through. Relax your knees a bit and your hips, that's it. Relax your ankles and imagine it going really down, down, deep into the earth. Very good. Okay, let's just do a few more of those. Breathing in. Breathing out. Very good. Okay, let's just do a couple more. Breathing in. Bring that chi into the lower burner. Long exhalation. Relax. Send the chi down. Use your imagination. Connect with the earth. Very good. Okay. One more. Nice and relaxed. Breathing in. And send that energy down. Keep the hips relaxed. Okay, very good. We're just going to relax the arms. Now check in again. Notice how much more connected we are to the earth. If you try and lift your legs up, oh, oh, okay, you're almost like they're stuck to the earth now. This feels relaxed and solid. And that's really important because we'll find out later in this series that kidney energy is like the root of the yin and yang of the whole body. And it basically is the root, it's a foundation of all that happens up here. So we need to get this strong before we can focus in on the middle and the upper burners. Okay, excellent. So now I'd like to show you the effect that, that stimulating the point of the week has uh, on our standing. And, what, um, and we have some fun with this, just experimenting with um, what happens. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you where kidney one is. I'm just going to show you the slide um, quickly just to show you. Okay, so basically what you do is you take your foot and you take a midline right down the middle of the foot and you divide it up into thirds, into thirds. Okay, so if I show you on my foot, okay, what it is is you take the midline here, divide it into thirds, go, and so you go one third, so that's one third, two thirds, three thirds, and it'll be right there. Okay, that's your kidney one point. So let's give that a really good workout and let's check out what happens when we stand up again after having worked it. Now you can sit down on a chair if it's convenient for you. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up kidney one here by pressing in and opening up the foot, look like this. <clears throat> 
relaxing the whole foot. We're going to do some general self shiatsu on the feet just because the feet are the most yin structure of the body because they're the lowest and they're connected to the earth. So if you find yourself getting really stressed out in the next week and everything's getting too much for you, maybe you're getting a headache, maybe you're feeling a bit dizzy, um, maybe you're just feeling a bit anxious, anything in the upper part of the body, this point is a magic point for uh, helping with that. So you could just take five minutes out of your day, give yourself some time, give yourself some space, spend five minutes massaging your feet like this, using self shiatsu and focusing in on kidney one and I guarantee that you're gonna feel a lot calmer just after five minutes, okay? It's a really useful resource to have, um, especially in these times of uh, stress. There's so much stress about, okay? Okay, so that's really pressing in. I'm just pressing in with one point right in it and I'm just putting two fingers over and I'm just going straight in there. Okay, now if you wanna use your imagination, you can imagine a line from the center here, right in here, all the way up the leg and into the lower burner. Okay, and the kidney channel runs from here up the inside of the leg. Next week, we're gonna be doing kidney three, which is the next exciting point on the kidney meridian. Okay, now what I sometimes do is just do a bit of tapping of the foot on the mat or the floor. Wiggle, the thing, wiggle your feet and um, toes about a bit, and then it's time to do the other foot. Yeah, so we're going to go the same thing again, placing our fingertips right in the centre of the part, um, centre of the foot. Remember, take the midline, divide it into three, and that's where kidney one is, just in there. I'm using all my fingers at the moment to open the whole area up. You see that, and I'm squeezing the foot out like this. Okay, and you want to be more precise, you can place your finger, two fingers right over it and just press in and then relax and imagine that connection all the way up the leg and into the lower burner. That gives you a very specific feeling of the acupoint, kidney one. It's called gushing spring or bubbling spring, you might have heard. Um, and you might think, well, wait a minute, isn't it, doesn't it have a downward action? Well, it does have a downward action on the yang. And the reason it has a downward action on the yang is because it basically tonifies the yin. So that gushing spring, what's gushing up here is yin. It's cooling, cooling yin energy coming up from the earth giving us a feeling of stability, connectedness with the earth, and a general feeling of ease, basically, in, especially in the upper body. And boy, we need that right now, right? <laughs> okay, so here we go, tapping. And just to finish off, let's do some doing. So doing is when we use really relaxed fist or side of the hand, let's just use the fist and just tap away right onto, right onto kidney one here. Excellent. Okay, and then the other foot. Let's go back this way. There we go. Right onto kidney one there. Okay, now the next thing, you just pop my socks back on, is we'll find out and see what effects that's had. We just spent five minutes there working on kidney one. So let's see what effect that's have that's had so we're going to just come back into the standing again okay wow can you feel that the whole sole of the foot is open but more importantly just feel that connection down into the earth it's so much more relaxed isn't it and don't you feel so much more connected to the earth so thinking downwards is one thing, but now think upwards to the upper part of your body and you notice that if you connect that through into that feeling of the earth, 
everything just gets so much more manageable and so much calmer in the upper body. And that's the secret of kidney one point of the week. It's the most tonifying yin point of the body. Fantastic. Okay, great. So now that we've stabilized this and we've connected it with the earth, we can move on to the middle burner. And, we, and that's a very popular one this week with half of you wanting to work on the middle burner. Don't worry, we're going to talk the upper burner later. Okay, now the middle burner contains the liver and the stomach. It's very much connected with the red zone, um, with anxiety, um, with frustration. And it's really important that this whole area feels relaxed and soft. So let's just do some self and poo, poo therapy. In other words, we're going to work on our abdomen. And we're just going to work around here with gentle pressure relaxing the whole of this diaphragm area which is connected to the middle heater okay now if it's very sore you want to be nice and gentle with it nice and gentle and when we go back after maybe 10 minutes of middle burner focused exercises um, then we can go and check in again just see what this whole area feels like okay we can start the process off by really tuning into any stiffness around here using just simple ampuku finger pressure. Okay, now as we go through the yearly cycle, we'll do the other meridians, we'll do the liver and the stomach. But for now, let's release the middle burner with this twisting exercise. So we have our feet shoulder width apart. We're going to keep our hips straight towards the front. We're going to connect upwards with our alignment from a golden thread that suspends us from above. Okay, now look, isn't that really nice, a nice feeling now? Because the legs are connected down through kidney one into the earth, and we're just kind of free to relax up here in the upper body, the more yang body. It's great, okay? And now that means we can now bring that in movement into this twisting, okay? So keep that floating head, Keep that floating. And now we're going to focus in on relaxing the middle burner. So keep the lower body nice and stable and keep the upper part of your head and neck suspended and focus your attention at releasing the middle burner by twisting. Okay? And that's because it affects the liver and the gallbladder channels, which are really important in stagnation in the middle burner. Now, depending on whether you want it strong or more relaxed, you may want to make it a bit more vigorous and really stretch into it. And you can even start thumping the sides of you, giving dough into the liver and gallbladder channel. Just figure out what feels comfortable for you. Or you may want to do it a little bit more relaxed. But whatever you do, keep those feet connected to the earth. Keep those feet connected. Keep the hips forward. Okay. Very, very good. Okay. So now let's see what effect that twisting exercise has had on the middle burner. So let's just do a quick check in now. Oh yeah, that does feel, feels a little bit more open here. And that's because it's shifted some of the liver chi stagnation that we've got there. Okay, so now it's time to use some channel work, doing some doing channel work. Okay, this is where we start using some tapping down the channels. We've got two sets of channels in the legs that connect with the middle burner, so let's do both of them. And let's start off with the gallbladder and the liver, just follow me. So we're gonna just tap the sides of my body. We're gonna go right into the buttocks here. And we're gonna go down the outside of the legs. I'm going to go up the inside of the legs, okay? You don't need to worry too much about the location. It's not that important. Just the sides, inside and outside of the legs. Okay, Just going down. And we're going to go up. Going to make our legs super connected to the earth. Very good. So now we're gonna we're gonna rub just rub off, stroking off, okay, shaking our legs out. 
and let's check in again. Whoa, okay, so now if you feel a really good release with that dough in, it's probably because you've got liver and gallbladder uh, stagnation, um, which means you're probably a bit frustrated maybe, um, and so that's really starting to release that. Excellent, so let's do the other paired meridians to, that connect with the middle burner, and these are the stomach and spleen meridians. They run on the front of the legs. I'm gonna start off here in the middle burner, just tapping along the midline of the body here. And this is for any of us who feel a little bit my kind of worried and anxious and concerned about stuff. That tends to affect the stomach channel. So we're going to go down here, down the outside, front of the legs. So I'm on the front outside of the legs. And down here, down onto the front of the shins here. Down, 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 and up to the inside. Very good. Okay, let's go around a couple more times. Just using the flat of the hands or loose wrists. Very good, okay, and I'm going to brush down the fronts of our legs and we're going to check in on the middle burner again. Oh, lovely, okay. So now if you have a big change with that one, that's probably because the stomach and spleen channel are being a bit obstructed, probably by more like anxiety. And that relates to the earth um, element and we're going to be doing the earth, we're going to be looking at the elements in overview uh, next week. So you'll get an idea of how that works for you. Okay, very good. So we've got the middle burner now, a lot more relaxed. Okay, we've used the channels. And it's time now to finish off by working on the upper burner and also the yang channels of the body because when we get stressed, we tend to hold tension in the yang channels. So the strategy is we build up the yin, the inside of the body, so it's nice and strong, and then we can release the yang channels. Okay, so let's just do some simple work on the upper burner. And because it's going autumn going into winter, we're going to do this exercise, which is for the lungs. <clears throat> okay, so we'll find out next week the metal element is associated with the autumn. We're going from the metal into the water element. So it's a good idea this time of year to make sure your lung channel is nice and uh, open and energized. Okay, so feet shoulder width apart, lift up your arms, bring your thumbs outwards. Drop back. Okay, now we need to open up this front of the shoulders as you bring the arms back. Keep the breathing nice and relaxed. And now let's check out the lower burners as we do this, okay? Go bring your attention back down into the Dantian. Remember, that's this bit here. Just check in, make sure that your hips are relaxed. Make sure your knees and feet are relaxed. Kidney one, does that feel open? Point of the week. <laughs> as long as that's nice and open, you're gonna find it easier to breathe as well because the kidney energy helps it, assists the breathing, it allows the breathing to settle downwards. That's a Chinese medicine thing. Okay, so kind of interestingly, if we connect with the earth through kidney one, it's going to kind of make it easier for us to breathe in and keep the upper burner nice and open and energized. That feels pretty good, doesn't it? Very good. Okay, so now let's go into a lung stretch. We're going to breathe in, stretch back up like this. Breathe in and breathe out. Feel the stretch on your thumbs. Breathe in. Breathe out. This is a nice long stretch. Breathe in and breathe out. Very good. Excellent. Okay, so now let's just do a couple of stretches for the other organs in the upper heater. So we're going to do this one, pericardium stretch. We're going to stretch forwards and stretch forward like this. Breathing in and breathing out. 
Stretch towards your middle finger. Okay, now can you feel a stretch really deep into the chest here? That's the pericardium channel right into the center of the chest there. Okay, and again. And again. Now you want to emphasize the exhalation if you want to get from the red zone down into the green zone. The reason for that is because the exhalation stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. Calming down. Very good. Okay, here's a stretch for the heart. Hands in the prayer position, stretching up, opening up the armpits, breathing in, breathe out. Keep those elbows nice and open, relax. Can you feel a connection right the way through into the armpit? That's the heart meridian. Okay, let's really work on that breathing. Keep that kidney one open, keep that yin energy connected, breathing in. Remember, kidney one calms the spirits. Okay, and it does that mainly by connecting with the heart and the mind and bringing the whole thing totally chilled out. We really need that right now, okay? So let's just do one, really connect with that kidney one, breathing in. Relax the mind, relax the upper burner. Okay, excellent stuff. Okay, quick check-in, let's check in, standing. Doesn't that feel really good? You can relax your hips, feel kidney one, bubbling up that yin. <laughs> Lovely, relaxed, strong feeling here. This is starting to move now. Really hope that you're feeling a lot more flexible here. And this is kind of nice and calm and open. So that's the three burners, okay? Now, so what we need to do now is just clear any yang channel obstructions because the yin channels are here. If you look at me now, this is all the yin channels coming up this way. And these channels that you can see here are the yang channels. And they go from the head down the body into the feet. And what tends to happen is we get this happening. Okay, and we get stressed. So let's do a little routine for the face and work down towards the hands and feet. So what we do in Shiatsu when we've got problems like headaches, things like that, we tend to work distal points in the hands and the feet. So we can do that ourselves by doing a bit of local work. So let's do a little face routine now. Just tapping around the forehead and over the top of the head. This is the bladder channel, which is a pair of the kidney channel. We're going to be doing a bit more of that in this 10 week series. Yep. And then we've got the size of the head. We can tap the size of the head. Do you like my haircut, by the way? It's a completely DIY haircut. Um, ever since COVID, we had one trip to the hairdressers in the last so many months. So I've had to do this all myself with a razor in the morning. <laughs> Very good for slapping the gallbladder channel, though. Great access to that. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we've got this, and then we've got that. This is the bladder channel. This is the gallbladder channel. And this area is the stomach channel. So let's just work around the cheekbones. See what I'm getting? I'm, pu I'm pushing around the cheekbones here. And we're going around to the jaw. This is some really important points here. I'll, 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 I'll for the jaw. Again, jaw tension is something we see a lot in the Shatsu Clinic. People get stressed. We've got this kind of thing happening. So it's really good to do some self Shatsu around the jaw. Okay, and in future weeks, we'll do some points of the week on the face, I'm sure. And I'll give you a really good comprehensive knowledge of acupoints that you can use for jaw issues and eyes and all that sort of thing. We've got some coming up. Okay, good. So now we go from here, point here, underneath here, around the upper um, gums. Can you feel your teeth there? Just go around them, relaxing those. And we go around here. Nice. 
and then right around the whole jaw, I'm pressing slight in here underneath the chin, where the tongue is. Okay, all the yang channels begin and end on the face. So really what we want to do is this sort of movement down the neck. So now it's really important that we work on the neck. And there's three main yang channels we need to work on. Okay, we'll be covering each of these in detail in the next year. So don't worry if you can't remember them all right now. But uh, the first one, which is this one, we come down here and we get down to this bit here. This is the bladder channel. And we're going to squeeze in here. Or you can tap. I know some people have problems with their shoulders, they can't squeeze. You can tap or you can press your fingertips. Just adapt it to what's easiest for you. I'm going to tap today, actually. I just feel like doing a bit of tapping here. So I'm tapping down the bladder channel. Use the sides of the hands. Okay, and then we've got the gallbladder channel, which is the one that goes from the side of the head, goes into here. And that goes right into this hollow here. This is an important point. We'll be covering this later on in the year. Uh, again, you can squeeze down, or if you can't squeeze, you can tap with the fingertips, or even press in with the fingertips. The main thing is to move the energy down the back and the sides of the neck. Okay, and we mustn't forget the front of the neck. This is the stomach channel. Remember the one that goes down onto the legs. We're going to squeeze this here using my knuckles here, right onto the front of this SCM muscle, which is this big muscle here that uh, connects us, connects that moves the head around. And getting hold of that and squeezing it down. Very good. Oh, how does that feel? Oh, a bit better, right? A bit more kind of open and relaxed in the head. So now we need to get it all the way down the body, out through the hands and the feet. So let's go. <clears throat> Moving the yang channels move out this way. They go down the arms and they go down the legs to the feet. We've already done the stomach and the gallbladder channel today, down the legs, but we need to connect it all up. Okay, so let's just tap around the shoulders. It's important we've got the gallbladder channel and the stomach channel here. Don't worry about them. Just think shoulders and think down the outside of the arms, down to the fingers. Okay, down the outside of the arms, down to the fingers. So you can see that we've moved from yin to yang today, haven't we? We've moved from the real core, lower part of the body out, and now we're going down the yang channels and clearing all the yang channels. So again, we're balancing the whole session between yin and yang. You notice that we've spent more time really on the middle burner because that's what we needed as a group. And we've also spent more time establishing the yin. And the reason for that is because the time of year, we need to make sure that the lower burner is strong um, because that's the foundation of the energy in the whole body. And it's the one that which we'll find out next week when we start doing the elements. The winter is connected to the kidney channel. So it's a really important time to look after the lower burner. And making the lower burner strong allowed us to free up the middle burner and open up the upper burner. Okay, so it kind of all fits together. So we're going to brush off down the shoulders and the arms. And now we're going to shake out, relax your jaw, hang, uh, okay? let your jaw relax, and we're just going to shake the hands out. And the idea of this is to just remove any, move any obstruction that we've loosened up in the shoulders out down through the arms and the hands. Okay, good, let's check in. Not bad, feel that relaxation in the head and this open feeling all the way down the arms. Now we just need to go down to the feet and we'll be done, okay? Now if you're working with a family friend or someone in your bubble and they can work on your back, you can get them to do some doing on your back. Otherwise, if you're like me and you're on your own, we've got to do it ourselves. So we're gonna tap down 
as low as you can here. See how far you can stretch down. Okay, and then if you and then we can go foot like this and catch it as high up as we can. So there's very little that's been missed out. As long as we're reasonably flexible with our hands. We're going to use the side of the hands here. Just give you a bit of a close-up on that, I think. See how I'm using the side of the hand there, like this, to work down the, the back. buttocks here, around the sacrum, this area here, and then we're going down the backs of the legs, and you can either do it with your fists or the palms, or you can, when you get down to the calves, use your fist this way. Oops. Okay, so go down. Off the sides and the fronts of the legs as well, to the whole outside of the legs, right down to the feet. Okay, very good. Okay, so shake out a little bit. Ooh. Okay, so that's cleared out all the yang channels. Let's see what that feels like. Standing. <clears throat> very different feeling to doing all the yin channels, isn't it? It's more of a tingly feeling of movement down and out. And that's stimulating the natural flow of the yang downwards. So let's really enjoy that, make the most of that by doing this simple breathing exercise from Tai Chi. We really, really appreciate that, I think, now, having done so much work on our energy. So we're going to keep the feet shoulder width apart. And let's really enjoy that feeling of kidney one opening, feeling really the support of the earth, the calmness of the earth the cooling aspect of the earth, rising up the body and cooling and chilling out the upper body. So let's just feel that, relax your hips. Okay, so now we've got that yin established, we can allow our head to float up, really relax the jaw, relax the shoulders. Okay, and we have a nice healthy feeling of yang, feeling of movement, of warmth and activity, but not, uh, it's like, ooh, feels great, okay? And now we're going to do some breathing. We're going to breathe in, sink down, float our arms up, and then we're going to breathe out and bring our arms down, like Tai Chi exercise. You may know this already. So here we go, breathing in, and then breathing out. Okay, let's keep doing that. For a few minutes to finish up and what we'll do is we'll check in internally and just see how everything is all right so we're going to open up kidney one breathe deep into dantian sink down okay. as we breathe out send your energy down into your feet and down into the center of the earth connect kidney one Relax those hips, breathe in. Keep the legs open, connect with the earth. Feel the heaviness and solidity of your body, that's the yin quality, feel that solidity going down, push up from the earth and send your energy down into the earth. Doesn't that feel relaxing, okay? Doesn't that feel great, breathing in? So now we can safely connect with the heavens in a relaxed way. So we're gonna tune to the top of the head, we're gonna sink down, keep the jaw relaxed, feel free and active, but not stressed. 
just nice and able to carry on with life in a relaxed way. Let's float down, float down, feel the lightness in your body and pull up from the heavens, keeping it nice and light. Okay, so feel lightness in our body. Okay, excellent. And now let's combine them. So we're opening up kidney one, connecting down into the earth and floating up, feeling light, feeling solid and feeling light. One more. Okay, very good. So now it's time to check in one more time. Let's see if you can take your mind back to how you felt an hour ago. You can check into the lower burner, see what that feels like. Check into the middle burner, see what that's like. And then check into the upper burner. And then comparing all three, do they feel more integrated? And you remember also, we asked ourselves at the beginning, do we feel too heavy? Do we feel too light? So now remember how you were then and just see if you feel nicely poised between the heaviness and the lightness in your body, connection between earth and the heaven. So just enjoy that feeling for a moment. Just see how you're feeling. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much as well to all the new people that have tuned in uh, this week. So lovely to have you in the group and really look forward to this whole year's cycle. In a year's time, we will have covered pretty much the basics of Chinese medicine. So you're gonna be all be experts um, in points and um, everything else. So let's just quickly review what we've done. Um, week one, we have yin and yang. Originally, it meant the sunny side of the hill or the shady side of the hill. That's the original meaning of it. Um, for us, what it does is it's so useful because it connects our body energy with the environment, with the earth, with the heavens. The heavens where the sun is, it's all warm and windy and active. And the earth is nice and still and quiet and cool. And it's got liquid in it, but we can have liquids that come up and cool our body. Don't forget that yin and yang are complementary. Not, one is not good, one is not bad. We need both to flow together to provide health. And that's what we, and that's what we need. <clears throat> okay, so we have heaven and earth. We, we use that a lot. Um, I mentioned the cooling aspects of the earth and warming aspects of the chi. If you're feeling like you need more yin, you need to rest more. If you feel that you need more yang, then you need more activity. Go out, get some, get some exercise. <clears throat> if you're one of those middle burner people this week, most of you, a lot of you are middle burner people. If you've got stagnation, you feel frustrated, maybe anxious, I'd encourage, if you're not too tired, I'd, I'd encourage you to get out, walk, exercise, and you'll feel a lot better. If you're a lower burner, maybe an upper burner person, you're feeling a little bit tired, you may want to rest more. Just give yourself a break. Do some of these exercises, maybe repeat this class, charge up that lower burner, and you're going to feel a lot calmer and you'll be able to then slowly move into activity. Okay, and yin is to do with blood and body fluids, and the yang is the chi, the energy that we, that we use. Also, the lower body is more yin, and the upper body is more yang. That's why we get headaches, and we feel kind of frantic up here, and that we need more yin in the lower body, and we know how to get that, don't we? Kidney one, point of the week. Get that yin gushing up through kidney one this week. Get it into your whole body, descend any access, excess yang from your head and calm your spirit. Okay, thank you so much, really enjoyed it. So next week we've got an element overview. We'll just give you an overview of what the elements are and we're gonna do kidney three, one of my favorite points next week. So make sure you tune in, tell all your friends and hopefully we'll see you here next week. And if you're watching the recording, thanks for tuning in as well. And maybe we'll see you on the recording next week too. Okay, so see you next week.
And thank you for Basti and Dinah for their work in the chat. It really helps. Yeah, great. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> Before we go, though, I'd just like to find out how you feel now. And we'll just see if anyone's had any reactions. Do you feel more balanced overall, about the same, or less balanced? Sometimes people have a reaction, especially the middle burner um, uh, can cause reactions. So we've got one person there who's had a reaction. If you need any help, any support, then please do email us in and we will help you one-to-one -one with that. Okay, so I really encourage you. Fantastic group, lovely. Thank Bye. you very much. We've got well over 100 people with us and we see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye, Basti. Thank you, Diana.